Hello, this is Carrie Johnson with the Iowa Department of Management, and I'm going to take a few moments to walk through the process to amend local government budgets in the online system. Previously, uh, folks would use a sort of general miscellaneous amendment form to complete um, the budget amendment process. Uh, but now what we've done is use our um, online budget system to generate a budget type specific form that you will use if you are uh, required during the fiscal year to amend your budget. And this particular um, budget amendment discussion is specific to those budgets um, that are uh, sort of the miscellaneous budgets um, that have used that form in the past. So ag extensions, assessors, townships, um, emergency management, E911, etc. Cities, counties, schools will be um, treated a little bit differently um, and those will be addressed separately. So first of all, just to talk a little bit about budget amendments, um, just as a, as a reminder, a budget amendment is required for any increase in the totals in any fund as reported in your adopted budget. So if you're going to exceed the amount that you budgeted in expenditures for any of the funds that you report in your budget, um, then you would be required to do a budget amendment. And if if you're questioning whether an amendment would be required in any particular situation, it's prudent to follow up um, with a contact to the Department of Management staff that deals with that budget type and they can sort of assist you in determining whether or not your situation would require a budget amendment. Keep in mind too that an amendment must be effective before any of the expenditure amounts are exceeded. So you amend before you spend, in other words. So if you're approaching a situation during the fiscal year where you're um, nearing your budgeted expenditure amount and you think you may exceed it, um, that's the time to amend your budget. So amend before you exceed. Budget amendments do require the same 10 to 20 day notice and hearing procedures as required for the adoption of the original budget. Um, so you have to publish notice, uh, you have to hold a public hearing on that amendment and um, then adopt it at that public meeting following the hearing. Budget amendments are subject to protest. So an amendment of a budget after May 31st, which is properly protested, but without adequate time for a hearing and decision on the protest by June 30th is void. So what does this mean? Basically, um, like your budget, a budget amendment can be protested by the public. They can gather signatures and submit a protest document to your county auditor. Um, the situation then results that if you would happen to adopt your budget amendment after May 31st and someone would protest it, keep in mind that that budget amendment and that, pro and that uh, protest would need to be decided before the end of the fiscal year. And doing so within a month would probably be difficult because there is a process involved with um, the protest uh, procedure. So if someone, if you would adopt your budget amendment after May 31st, someone would protest and you would find yourself uh, going through, trying to go through the process and end um, before the end of the fiscal year, you might find your budget amendment to be void. Protesting a local government budget and an amendment is covered under Chapter 24. Um, persons affected by the proposed budget expenditure or tax levy or by any item thereof may appeal the budget or amendment by filing a petition and appeal with a county auditor of the county in which the local government is located. And then after that um, budget protest document is submitted to the county auditor, the county auditor would check to make sure that the signatures are valid and they would for forward that document onto the state appeal board. State appeal board is a three member body that consists of the state auditor, the treasurer of state and the director of department of management. That three member board then um, would go through the process to hold a local hearing on that budget amendment um, and gather information and then render a decision. 
So again, this process would have to be completed before the end of the fiscal year, or you would find your amendment to be void. So what's the role of Department of Management? Department of Management's role is to provide the forms, budget forms and amendment forms, um, forms, you know, whether they're paper forms or web-based forms. We provide the forms, the instructions, and we provide technical assistance for local government budgets and amendments. So let's talk about how you get to the online site. Um, one way to get there is to go to the Department of Management's website um, and then go to the address as seen here. This is the sort of general page for all of our miscellaneous budgets. You would use the left hand navigation to go to the applicable page for your budget type. And you may already have uh, your particular budget types um, web page as a bookmark in your system. And then of course you just go directly there. But if you're not sure where to start, this is uh, the way to do it. So you'd select your budget type. And then once on the web page for your budget type, you'd select the blue button titled Submit Budget. And what we um, may see after the amendment forms become available is that this button, button will also say Submit Budget and Amend or Submit and Amend Budget. That's our long-term intent. So um, once you click on that page on, or on that button, you will see the following uh, blue screen appear and you would use the same Enterprise a, a account ID to log into the online system as you did when you prepared your budget. So again, same system, same login as you used to prepare the original budget. Um, if at any time you have questions about access to the system, again, uh, you can follow up with a DOM person that is responsible for that budget type, and they can help make sure that the correct people have access to your budgets and amendments. So once you click on um, that and you log in, on the left-hand side, you will see budgets and amendments. Once you start or, comp or complete an amendment, it will show up if you select amendments. But if you have not created an amendment yet, um, and this is the first time that you're actually gonna need to amend your budget and you need to create that amendment, you would select budgets. When you select budgets, you'll see your budget displayed on the main part of the screen. So the main part of the screen, the big part of the screen will show you uh, your budgets, right? And you can um, begin the amendment process of that budget one of two ways. And keep in mind too, um, and this um, may or may not need to be mentioned, but when you're, an amend when you're amending a budget, you're only amending the current year budget, right? The budget year that you're in is the only budget that you would ever actually amend. So, so you're in fiscal 21, you need to amend your budget because your expenditures are gonna be more than you had budgeted. And keep in mind, that's the only reason why you amend. You amend for expenditures. Uh, you cannot amend to bring in more tax revenue. That's not a uh, reason to amend your budget. You only amend to show an increase to uh, your expenditures. What you're doing essentially is you're going back to the public and saying, okay, when we budgeted, we said we were going to have, uh, you know, $200,000 in expenditures. But because something unexpected has happened, we actually need to have $300,000 in expenditures. Well, that is a change to your adopted budget. You need to go back to your public and say, okay, we need to ask for more authority to make a greater expenditure and we will go through the amendment process and give you that notice, have a public hearing, and our governing body will adopt that amendment if they so see fit. So again, you can amend, the, you can begin the amendment process one of two ways. From this screen, um, you see your, your budget here in the middle and you can select the amend button to generate an amendment form. Uh, what the amendment is, is again, it's a different form than the original budget. You have your original budget, that document, that form does not change. What this system does is create an additional form that is your amendment form, but it will pull forward for you information from your adopted budget. So from this screen, you can select the amend button to generate an amendment form for your budget, or you can enter into the budget and then you'll see at the top um, after you enter into the budget by selecting edit at the top you'll see an amend button 
So you can either do it um, from the main screen and select amend, or you can enter into the budget, you know, get into that document and click the amend button. Once you click amend in either case, you'll see the following message that says, are you sure you wanna create an amendment for this budget? If so, click OK to navigate to the amendment form. So again, what the system will do if you um, click OK is it will generate and direct you to a new page, which is the amendment form for your current year budget. Um, and as a reminder, as I mentioned earlier, once you've started an amendment, if you save and log back in later, that amendment will display if you select amendments on the left hand navigation. So you can start your amendment, you know, do some work in it, you know, maybe you're not sure um, of all the details, but you go ahead and get it started. You save it and then you come back in later to finish up the process. After selecting amend, the amendment form will generate for you and the system will direct you right to that form automatically. And the form will look a lot like your adopted budget summary, right? Like that, that page that you have that um, is your adopted budget summary that lists your funds and um, your expenditures for those funds. So again, it's a more simplified version because it's really just talking about expenditures. It's not gonna talk about fund balance or revenue or taxes or anything like that. It's just talking about expenditures by fund. Similar to the budget system, you're going to enter your data into blue cells. The blue cells are the ones that are editable. If a cell is white, it is um, either, you know, pulling from the system or it's um, making a calculation. So the form will display your adopted budgeted expenditures or amended budget if you had completed an amendment this fiscal year already. So say you amend once and you find later in the year that you need to amend again. That second amendment um, will pull information from the first amendment. So it will uh, move through the process for you. So um, if you've already completed amendment, as I mentioned, you'll see the amendment information in this first column. Um, but if not, if this is your first amendment, the, this will be pulling expenditures um, from your adopted budget in the first column. Second column is where you enter the amounts you need to increase by fund. So, um, you know, whatever that amount will, may be. The third column then just sums for you uh, the first and second column to show what your budget would be after you amend. And then the final column is where you must enter the reasons for the increase. Um, there, you know, whatever that reason may be, whatever explanation makes sense to you, you would enter that um, in that space there. Be sure to save your progress and check errors as you're working through the system and be aware that you do must enter an explanation on the line beside any fund you're amending or the system will display an error. You can't leave that blank. You do need to enter an explanation. So you'll see if you if you left it blank and you did a check errors or you tried to publish your budget and move it to the next step, you would get this error message that you must enter at least five characters in the reason. Once you are done working in your amendment and you know your publication intentions, so you know the, the time, date, and place of your hearing, and you're ready to get that notice to the paper, you would select Propose Publish on the top left. This is very similar to the budget, if you, um, you know, recall that process. You click Propose Publish, and you'd enter the time, date, and place of your meeting and click Propose. Um, we are allowing for a little bit more flexibility in this meeting location space, so if you need to enter electronic meeting Meeting information, you can, um, you know, do returns through and, and spread that out a little bit as you see fit. Um, so just be aware there is more space available to you in the meeting location uh, slot if you need to enter electronic meeting information. So you enter the time, date, and place of your meeting and you click propose. The system will then generate um, and download a PDF file to save to your machine. So it will go through the process and will tell you um, that you can download the PDF file. So you save that off to your machine or you open it and um, you know use your print browser uh, if you wanna print off a hard copy at that point. And the um, document will be a one pager that will look sort of like this in, in the example. You can also generate the hearing notice if you have proposed and published your budget or budget amendment. You can also generate that notice if you go to the top right and select print publication notice. Again, it will generate a PDF for you to download, save off to your machine, print from your print browser, whatever works for you. 
Okay, so once you have proposed the amendment, if needed, you can always return to draft at the top of the screen if you need to reduce expenditures further or make any other changes before you adopt. So um, if your, for instance, your board decided that the initial amount of expenditures you were looking at are higher than what um, they want to adopt, then you would return to draft and reduce those expenditures. Um, or if you need to change your meeting uh, date from what you had thought it was going to be, you can return to draft again and, um, and do that process. It will just simply open up the budget for your edits. Once you're ready to, um, you know, finish up with it, you will need to propose publish again to move the budget amendment uh, to the next part of the process. So after you've proposed publish and you have your hearing notice available, you would submit that notice of public hearing to your paper. And just as a reminder, you do need to provide notice, not less than 10, no more than 20 days prior to the date of your public hearing on the amendment, just as you did with the budget. The same notice requirements are required for an amendment to the budget as were required to the budget itself. So you will uh, give notice of your public hearing, you will hold that public hearing, your governing body will close the public hearing, and then during, a, uh, during the meeting, then they would move to adopt your budget amendment. Um, so in general, when your governing body has approved the budget amendment, you would select adopt at the top, you'd enter the date your governing body approved the amendment and select adopt. By clicking adopt, the system will be prompted to download a PDF file to save on your machine. And this is the file that your governing body can sign to verify approval of your amendment. It's gonna look very similar to your notice page, but it will have signature lines at the bottom um, and the adopted date for your amendment. So just be aware that this is the page that then your board would sign. You can also go to the top right um, and from print, select print adoption at any point after you click that adopt button. So just another way to get that document for your board to sign. So if you've uh, you know, held your public hearing, your board has adopted your budget amendment, um, the step that you would take then is to file the documents with the county auditor. So you're going to give them your proof of publication for the budget amendment notice and your signed um, adopted budget amendment. So you provide them with those two documents. Just as a reminder, you don't need to send any documents to Department of Management now. Um, previously, you know, you or your county auditor would be scanning and emailing budget amendments to us. You don't need to do that anymore. We're gonna access that information via the online system. So that's just um, a reminder. Your county auditor will then verify publication requirements and um, other requirements are met um, and will certify your amendment via the online system. So again, your county auditor is going to take a look at your proof of publication and look at those dates and make sure that your notice was given not less than 10, no more than 20 days prior to the date, the date of the public hearing on your amendment. They're going to look at that. Um, and then they will uh, also make sure that you're not adopting an expenditure that was higher than what you published in the paper um, for your budget amendment. So they'll make those checks and then they will certify your amendment via the online system, similar to how they certified your budget in the online system. They're gonna use a very similar process. And uh, once your county auditor has certified your amendment on the online system, if you were to log back into the system and pull up your amendment, you'll see your status change to certified. So um, your budget amendment will then be certified in the system and there's really no other steps that need to be taken regarding that budget amendment. If you need to complete a subsequent amendment later in the fiscal year after your first amendment has been approved, you'd log back into the system bring up your amendment and select amend again. And you'll get the following message saying that a certified amendment already exists for the budget. Obviously you've already done an amendment, it was certified. Are you sure you wanna create a new amendment? If so, you click okay to navigate to the new amendment form. So this is essentially your amendment number two that you're creating. 
And the system will number your amendments and pull forward the information um, forward for each subsequent amendment. So it will track those for you. You can go back in at any time and look at the amendments that you have either in progress or previously completed. Keep in mind too that um, these amendments will also be available for the public if they were to go to the public facing side of the system um, and search for amendments, they would also be able to access those amendment forms. So if you want to um, provide that information to members of the public that are looking for that, um, it's an easy way to direct them to the amendment information. Inquiries uh, concerning uh, budgeting in general or the amendment procedures can be directed to your county auditor or to the department of management staff that works with your budget type. So um, I, for example, work with assessors and ag extensions and county hospitals. Um, you know, Ted has a, a series of, of folks that he works with as uh, does John. So if, if you're unsure who to talk to at Department of Management, you can take a look here. Um, this just lists the different contacts for Department of Management in local government and the budgets that they work with. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please let us know.